Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial where we're going to see 5 quick tips for your Code of 4 projects. And we're going to dive right in with a little 2D trick that can be a real lifesaver if you're a fan of pixel art. Indeed, if you're used to working with pixel art sprites and you've just arrived in Godot, then you might find yourself in quite a pickle at first, cause by default, since a lot of images should rather be smoothed out, thanks to what we call anti-aliasing, then the engine will decide to apply linear interpolation when it renders an image in a 2D or 3D sprite. So that's great for many images, but not for pixel art, of course. In that case, you'll get some weird blends and fuzziness in your images instead of getting your pixel per pixel or pixel perfect original coloring. To fix this, the solution is not to change any import settings on your image asset, but rather to tweak your sprite object's parameters, so either the sprite 2D or sprite 3D nodes that use your pixel perfect image. In their inspector, in the texture section, you'll see that there's a filter property with a few options. For pixel perfect renders, you want to switch it to one of the nearest options, either with or without map maps. And there you go, your pixel art is now properly imported and rendered in your Godot game. Still on the topic of asset imports, there's another cool trick that can help you with your 3D models, replacing imported materials with Godot material resources. That's a pretty cool thing, cause it allows you to reapply some colors that weren't embedded in your exported model, or to share a material between several imported models, or even to create more advanced effects in the game engine that couldn't be simply stored in a GLTF file, for example. For that, you just need to double-click your GLTF in the file system dock, which opens the advanced import settings pop-up. There, you can switch to the materials tab in the top left corner, and select the material that you want to replace. Then on the right, simply enable the replace option and pick the Godot material resource that you want to use instead, and so that you'll need to have prepared beforehand. And finally, click on the reimport button, and that's it! All your instances of this GLTF model will now use your Godot materials automatically. Plus, what's cool with this method is that because it's done at the import level, if you do an update of your asset, so you re-import a new version with the same name, all the import settings, including this material replacement, will still be kept as is. Also, as a side note, when you use this system in Godot, it can be quite neat to lighten your GLTF files since you're not going to use the materials anyway. Typically, in Blender, you can do that by exporting only placeholder materials rather than the real ones. This way, you still have the different material slots on your object, and so you can reassign materials slot by slot in the game engine, but you don't have any unnecessary data. Okay, now let's say that you're just prototyping a new scene with some assets that you imported, or you're preparing some white box layout of your elements. Well, even though that's just a first stage, it's still important to think about the overall ambience that you want. And for that, customizing the viewport environment can go a long way to making a better atmosphere. You can do this easily simply by clicking on these three dots at the top of the viewport panel in the toolbar, and then playing around with the sky and post-processing settings. In particular, this lets you pick the colors for your background skybox, how strong the sky illumination should be, and even decide what effects you want to enable or disable in this viewport preview. Another essential tool for any game designer is to have a clear list of all the actions that they've done in their session, and be able to instantly jump back to a previous state at will, so that they can kind of compare different ideas, or even just revert back to a previous better state. And luckily, Godot includes a built-in history system, that you can access with the panel on the right by switching to the history tab. This lists everything that you just did, so all of the commands, updates, property changes, and more. You see that you can filter the list to get just what happened in this currently open scene, or see the global session-wide actions. And even better, if you click on any of those steps, then you'll instantly be teleported back to that point, meaning that this previous state will be restored in your Godot editor. This makes it super easy to compare between two states, 
just by clicking on each one. Or you can also, of course, come back to some previous valid state and instead go another route. Okay, the last trick I want to talk about today is a way to create more interesting animations, thanks to the power of Bezier curves. If you're not too familiar with this concept, I actually made an entire episode about why it's a great way to level up your object dynamics and how it works in Blender, but the idea works just the same in Godot. In a nutshell, animation curves are about tweaking the interpolation functions that your engine uses to compute the values in between your manual animation keyframes. So for example, instead of having just a linear movement, you can get a smoothed out version like this. So suppose that you have a very basic movement of a sphere that falls down. In Godot, it's quite easy to ease the beginning or the end of the movement by selecting your keys and going to the inspector to change the interpolation factor value and thus create a basic curve behind the scenes. But what if you want to go beyond that? For example, what if you want to have some bounciness first? In that case, instead of using a simple property keyframing track like this, you might want to go for a Bezier curve track. Once you've selected the node and the property to evaluate, you'll notice that you can still create keys like before by selecting the object and clicking the key icon on the right of the property. But then you see that you also have this little track to curve editor toggle in the animation panel. This shows you your animation in another form, with the interpolation curves as well. You can zoom in to better see what you're doing, and also you can hide some of the channels that you're not too interested in. Typically here, I'm working on the position, but I don't really care about the X and Z positions, since they're not changing over time, so I'm going to hide those and just work on the green Y curve. For now, you see that our movement is quite basic, so it's not completely linear, but we just have little easings at the start and at the end, so basically if I play the animation, you might notice a little speed up in the middle, but that's quite subtle. Now if I want to add the bounciness at the beginning, what I need to do is just select my first point, so the one on the left, and click and drag it to bring this handle upwards. You see that this creates a bump in my interpolation curve, which corresponds to my sphere's vertical position bumping up before going down to its final value. Note that, of course, this perfect match here is because we're working with position, and more specifically vertical position, but technically you can do that with anything, so even a scale, a rotation, or even fancier properties. But so anyway, if I play back my animation now, you see that we get our bouncy movement, and we've only had to change our track type to Bezier Curve, and to play around with our interpolation curve a bit to get this effect. So Bezier Curve tracks in the Godot Animation Player node can be a great way to add more dynamic to your objects. But in any case, here you go. Those were five new Godot tricks that can help improve both your workflow and your visuals. If you liked the video, feel free to like it and subscribe to the channel to not miss the next ones. And of course, don't hesitate to drop a comment with ideas of good tricks that you'd like to learn. As always, thanks a lot for watching and take care.